Hey gang, Dan here from MarginallyClever.com. This is Timing Belt, which is super hard to, and annoying to model in 3D printing software. So I want to show you how I do it, and then you can make perfect belt to make perfect models before you spend any money on buying parts off the internet or whatever you're doing. To get all these teeth exactly right is, as I said, a bit tricky, and I'm here to show you how. So get ready with that pause button and follow along. Here's an example of where you might want to use a timing belt and you see how I got it wrong. If we zoom in here, you can see that they haven't been spaced quite perfectly. So there's not quite one tooth gap and there's little spaces like this. And the main reason that this has happened is that I didn't put the right distance from this center to this center, right? Whatever that, that amount is, we want to get that perfect. So we're going to start a new sketch here with the two circles for our two pitch values. Remember, there, there's a pitch value, which is, it is used mathematically in the calculation of gears and pulleys, and it is not the inside diameter of a belt, and it is not the outside diameter of a tooth. It is, it is another signifier. I don't have the right word for it, but I hope you understand what I mean. It's an important number, but it is, it is not uh, quite as obvious. So there's my pitch line, and I don't have this distance yet but I'm gonna get it, see. And I know that this is gonna be 50 teeth. And I know that this is gonna be 20 tooth. Let's go in here first and say times two divided by pi is, the two is the, the pitch of each tooth in the timing belt and divided by pi to get the diameter. And this one will be Oof. Excellent. So that is now tied together and we can adjust those numbers to make things happen. So let's figure out what that distance is. I went to a website called sudenga.com and they had this calculation and this is what we want, right? This beauty right here. You can ignore the rest of that. We want this calculator right here. So first we're going to find that B value. To do that, we need the number of teeth. And then the length of our belt at the pitch. Remember, the pitch is two. And I suppose we could make a pitch value and then connect that everywhere. B will be four times length minus 6.28 times D1 plus D2. And this gets mad because D1 and D2 have a unit type. So this is a trick to make them into no units. There, you see this unit, All these are all empty. I don't want units because it just screws me up later. Maybe this isn't perfect technique, but it seems to work for me. Now I need the square of the difference between D1 and D2. And if it doesn't like powers, that's fine. I can do this and then do this. So I have D diff squared. And finally, uh, not B, excuse me, Okay, and that's the number I'm actually expecting to see because this is about the eighth time I've tried to film this. So now I can tick this and say center to center times one millimeter so that it gives it a unit type. Thanks, Fusion. All right, so this and this, I want them both to be lined up nicely. And now it's all, all the color is gone because this is a lockdown type. And that's where we want it. Because lastly, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. So I'm, gonna, I'm doing that ahead of time for later. Remember, this is the pitch. So this is the inside, that's the outside, and we're gonna tweak these two numbers in a few moments. So now let's finish this, and we're gonna go and create a whole new sketch. Because we have no shortage of sketches. They cost us nothing, and it's easier to have many small sketches than one big ugly sketch. Here is a belt length calculator. See, I searched for timing belt GT2 profile, and I get this picture from Adafruit.com. And I can copy this. I'm actually going to turn it 90 degrees, or I can I can turn this like so, and do it exactly the same as what we see over here. And with that visible right next to me here, I'm going to make this whole whole thing. So that's a one, and that's a 0.254.
come in even further now. Okay. So we're going to make one half of a tooth and then we're going to mirror that tooth. And this is 0.4. And once again, it doesn't want to put it where I'd like. Try that. And let's try that. And da -da -da, and, da -da -da. and from here, we've got a 2. You see, in the drawing, it's showing you radius. That says R1. So, But I here, they want diameter, so it's twice as much. And I got a circle from here that connects to this. And this circle is 0.555 times 2. Congratulations, you managed to jump when I didn't ask you to. Right, so this part of the circle is the 555. And then there's a little bit inside here that's the 1. And then we got a 0.15 over here. So let's put a little circle here like this. And it is attached to that. There we go. And then finally a little line from here. Yeah, like that. And if you want, you can say, well, these are just construction circles. They're not, they're not the real deal. We're going to go from here to here to here. From here to here to here. Let's try that again. Right on the dot. Perfect. And then from here to here to here. Good. So, one last detail here. You see the pitch line? The pitch line in the picture is this dotted line through here. And there's a section after that that they have neglected to mention the dimension. But we can infer it. So we're going to do this. We know that this, this value, 1.38. But I'm, I'm not going to put this number here. here. I'll show you what happens if I do it like this. If I do it like this, put this in i get this nasty message it's nasty for a couple of other reasons every other number in here if i hover over it see that it gives me a d21 you can use d21 in other equations this guy you get nada you get nothing so go from here to here and i know that this is 1.38 minus 0.75 minus 0.254 and that gives me this number d21 Fantastic. So we're going to use D21 very, very shortly. Okay, finish this sketch. Extrude this whole section. Don't go down six. That is how much the thickness of my belt. And then we're going to mirror this body. Now we got one tooth. And you remember this sketch from before? Right. And if we bring back this part, you can see here the outside of our belt, according to our drawing, matches the outside of the belt that we have used with the offset. Okay, so you may be wondering why we had to jump through those hoops. I'm going to use a pattern on a path so that I can make this belt and, and put these teeth all the way around this belt. There is my tooth. Here is my pattern. My object is this tooth. My path is this inside edge. And this is the pitch line. So this is exactly the right distance that we need to make those parts work. And we want two millimeters between each component and we want number of teeth. And this should be spacing. Now you can see that they're they're turned a little funny, but that's what path direction is for. So we're we're very nearly home free. We still got this mess to clean up. Over here we're okay because we modeled it based on straight belt. And we never have a moment when the belt turns outwards because that would that would complicate life. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. I don't want to actually select all of these parts. Imagine if you had like a thousand teeth and you wanted to merge all of these together. It would get ugly. So instead, let's go back to our big view. Remember how I have another sketch with that inside line? I can take that whole inside line and I can go six millimeter and I can say join and everything it touches will be put together into a single beautiful perfect belt. Isn't that lovely? Now what do you say we take that I'm going to go back into this design. I'm going to get rid of the belt that we got. Let's take a look at that again. See not quite a perfect fit. Hide that. I'm going to bring our belt into here. Oh yeah yeah so notice this is trying to do in the center of mass of the part. It's not what you want or not what I want at all. I want here, which is a much more convenient location. Give me that 90, give me that 90. Now slide this way and check that out. Check that, mmm, 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 isn't that perfect? And you can see, yeah, this pulley was just slightly too far away because if it was perfect, this circle 
and this circle would be concentric. So that's informed me that my design here, my guesswork was ever so slightly wrong and I have more work to do, but at least I don't have to do the belt anymore. It is perfect. So you can use a similar strategy to make belts of many different profiles and many different thicknesses or widths. I hope that really helps you out. If it does, be sure to tag me so that I can applaud you. Like, share, and subscribe. I also want to thank all my Patreon people and the people who donate through uh, PayPal. I recently had to replace a nozzle on a 3D printer and I was only able to afford it because of your generous help. So thank you, everybody. You, it means a lot to me and I'm really delighted that I can give back with some experience like this. Okay, I've talked enough. You want to get modeling. I want to get back to this stuff too. So I will see you next time.